Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have June's Look For Less Challenge. The Look For Less Challenge is a monthly challenge where I ask you all to join me and my co-host to recreate high-end home decor pieces for our home for a whole lot less. My co-host for this month is Haley over at The Farmer and the Southern Belle. I have a link to her channel in my description box. Make sure you check her channel out to see what she created this month as well. If you created a video for today's challenge, please make sure to check my description box and click the link to add your videos. Before we start, make sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you don't miss out more inexpensive home decor inspiration like this. Let's get started. Now you may not know, but Pier 1 is actually going out of business. And I have been browsing their online inventory to see what they have available on sale. I came across this beautiful beaded round mirror that was on sale for $103.99, down from $130. The mirror was beautiful, but it was still out of my price range, so I decided to recreate this for my look for less. So for this, you will need a round board. I got this at Home Depot and I got the larger two foot one for $10. You'll also need a round mirror and I bought this one at Michael's. It's 14 inches in diameter. They carry it all the time and I used my coupon to get it even cheaper. And finally, you'll need these wooden beads that are cut in half and I actually purchased these on Amazon and I'll go ahead and link to everything that I used in the description box below. I wanted to give this a nice clean coastal look with a weathered feel and I just used what I had on hand. I used my home decor folk art wax, some gray chalk paint and some acrylic and of course my antiquing wax in order to mix it up and create a stain for my base. So the first thing I did was pour my clear wax and then begin blending the other colors until I got the shade that I wanted. The best thing about this is, is that you can adjust the shade to be as light or as dark as you wish, use any hue you want, or even use an actual stain. Now once I like the color that I created, I began adding it to the clear wax. Now I will admit, this took me a couple of tries because at first I thought that this would be enough, but as you can see here, it was just way too light and it wasn't doing much at all. And then when I would wipe off the excess, it looked like there was practically any stain at all. So I had to go back and add a little bit more wax and darken up the color and start adding it again. This time it was actually closer to what I had envisioned in my head. This time I applied a generous coat and then I let it sit so that I could soak up the stain a little bit more before I wiped it down. I made sure to cover all of the edges of the round board as well. I set that aside and then I began working on the wooden beads. I applied the same stain and used a smaller brush this time. I will say this process was a little messy. For these, however, I wanted to give them a little bit more dimension, so after these dried, I kind of added a little bit more antiquing wax throughout them to give them more of a wood grain finish, since they looked a little bit solid after I added the stain to them, since they were a different wood than the board, and it worked out. It actually gave it a little bit more dimension. Now these don't have to be perfect by any means, because later on I am going to dry brush them white, so you'll see that in a bit. So after the large board has dried, you see me here wiping off some excess wax. This wax tends to beat up and get a little grainy on the top, so I do like to remove all that before I apply any second coats. And here I am adding that same shade of brown stain all over what I had previously done. Now because I'd already applied a layer of wax, it was looking a little bit more solid than I wanted to, so while it was still wet, I kind of ran my rag across it so that it would get a little bit more streaky and not as, you know, just one color. 
So after that was dry, it was time to apply the mirror to the center and I love using my fabric um, measuring tape for all of my DIY projects because it's just so handy to just pull out. I made sure it was centered and I drew a circle all around it just so I could make sure to reapply it where it went. Plus you're not gonna be able to see that line later on once the mirror is back on. I flipped the mirror over and I removed as much as I could of the little felt pads in the back and then I applied E6000 generously all over. And as you can see, it's probably time for me to buy a new tube. I flipped it around and made sure that it was in that circle that I had drew earlier and next it was time to apply the little wooden beads. Now for this one, my littlest wanted to help and wanted to apply the beads with me, so you'll see her little hand adding these beads one by one. I thought it was super sweet that she wanted to help me out and she was so enthusiastic to put those little beads on. So we had a nice time doing this together. Now ideally you do want these to fully dry before going on to the next step which is dry brushing that white because if not you do run the risk of them shifting when you paint them. Now I use my home decor white chalk paint in white Adirondack and I just use a chip brush in order to dry brush this across the board. Now you can go as heavy or as light as you want. I fiddled around quite a bit trying to figure out how much I wanted. Um, I did however try to follow the wood grain to keep it nice and you know steady like that. But other than that I just randomly you know made heavier spots and lighter spots depending how I wanted it to look. And in some areas like this, I would wipe some down and kind of blend it in a little bit more so it actually looked like it was more in the wood instead of just right on top. You know I'm really into a project when I get all close up and personal and my head ends up getting into the camera frame. And in the original piece, I noticed that it had a lot of white kind of accumulated around all of the little beads to make it look like they had, I guess, age and crested over time. So I decided I wanted to do that too. And I wanted to fill in all those little nooks with more white. So it actually looks like, you know, it was there for a long time. So I added a little bit of watered down white chalk paint with a small little artist brush. And then I just wiped it away with a dry brush and then any excess I would remove with a rag. I also dry brush the white chalk paint onto the edges of the round board and because it's actually rougher than the smooth top, the dry brushing looked really great on the edges. Then I went back and did the same exact thing and added a little bit of watered down white chalk paint on the inside of all of the beads. That way it looked nice and cohesive throughout the entire outside of the mirror. Then I just took some glass cleaner and cleaned the mirror off, making sure that all of the paint was gone. And I hope to eventually add a hanging kit on the back of this mirror so I can hang it on a wall, but for right now, um, I did not have a kit to hang it for this video, so I'm just placing it on the mantle for it now. And here is what the mirror looks like all completed. I think it turned out so beautiful. And I can't wait till all my renovations are done so I can finally start decorating my home. I love the beads and the whitewash and the wood in the mirror. I just love it all. And I love that it has that wonderful coastal feel. 
All right, so here's how we did. The original cost $103. And I actually purchased the wood, the mirror, and the beads this time to create this look. And using the coupon code from Michaels and only using about half of the beads that I ordered, I ended up coming up just under $22 for this dupe. And while the wood surrounding my mirror is a little bit larger than the original, I still think this is a pretty good recreation. So that is my look for less recreation for the month of June. I wanted to create a larger piece this time, something really unique and special to my home that I would enjoy every time I would walk in the door and I can't wait to put this up. I have a special place for it in mind, so we'll see when the rest of the renovations are done inside the house, where it ends up. Make sure to hit like if you enjoyed this recreation. Let me know in the comments below if you would do something like this. Don't forget to check out that playlist for more inspiration and don't forget to visit my dear co-host Haley at her channel to see what she made as well. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, adios!